So another way of thinking about the F ratio is that the F ratio is really a ratio of the variation among groups to the variation within a group. The variation associated with among groups compared to the variation within a group represented by the error bars. Now, what are these pesky, pesky distributions? What is this all about? Um, so, of course, in a distribution, probability is represented on the y-axis, and the score, or the ratio, is represented on the x-axis. But you might get be getting tired or getting confused to hearing all these different scores. There's the chi-square score, there's the t-score, there's a z-score, there's an f-score. What are these scores? Well, in all cases, these scores are computed from a situation, in fact, hundreds and thousands of situations, where we know there's no true difference. So if I take one population and I artificially sample it and I divide it into, in this case, two groups, most of the time I'm going to get a situation that looks something like this, where these are my individual sample points, so these are values that are measured, and this is group one, and this is group two. Most of the time, if there's no true difference, I'm going to get similar sets of values when I randomly sample and artificially divide the population. When that happens, I'm going to have means that are going to be relatively similar, and my variation between the groups or among the groups is going to be low, and my variation within the groups is going to be high. What does that mean? Well, if this variation, if this F score is variation among compared to variation within, then as the variation uh, within is high and the among is low, I'm going to have a low score. So that's going to push me this direction in, term, in my F ratio. So my F ratio is generally going to be low. And most of the time, I'm going to end up with a low F ratio that's somewhere in this territory. Occasionally, I may accidentally sample such that all of my, say all my group 1 is here, and all my group 2 is here. But it's, an, it's random, random chance. You would agree that if these are coming from the same population and there's no difference, then it would be a random event and be a pretty rare event for me to accidentally sample this way, such that I get a mean here and a mean here, and I have a large between group uh, difference or among group variation. The difference from this line to this line is relatively large, whereas the variation within here is low. So this is within. And this is between. So this will happen in a rare event. In that event that I have a large amount of variation among and a low amount of variation within, then it's a low event and I get a high value because this will yield me a high F ratio. So the F value will go this direction, will be out here. And if we trace this back to the Y axis, this is a low probability. So that doesn't happen very often. This is all dependent on us starting with sampling a population where there's no pattern. There's no difference between the groups. So in other words, the null hypothesis is true. There's no pattern. This is really important because all of these scores or ratios are all computed from situations where there is no pattern. And what we're saying is if there is no pattern, how often do we accidentally claim, do we, do we accidentally get a high value in these scores such that um, it looks like there's a pattern when in fact there's not? So how often does that happen in a null scenario? All of, st all of these statistics, all of these parametric statistics are testing 
that null situation. They're testing the null model. And if you're looking for significance, what you're looking for is to reject the null model. So the F distribution is a distribution of what happens under null circumstances. When there's no real pattern, uh, what's the probability of getting a given F score? Well, this is why we don't spend a whole lot of time concentrating too much on um, the distributions of these various scores because whether we're talking about F ratio or chi squared or T or, or T scores, here's our let's say here here's a hypothetical T score distribution. Draw it in green. Might look something like this where in the case of a t-score, you're taking the uh, values of two means, maybe, for example, in a paired t-test, and then you're dividing by some, you know, pooled uh, measure of variation, something like that. Um, in the case of uh, that t-score, you have a distribution, but you still have, you might have a distribution that looks a little bit different, but you still have probability. So there's probability on the y-axis, and then you get a score that could be uh, either in the negative or in the positive range. In the case of chi-square, you have a distribution that, again, looks kind of similar to the F-ratio uh, a lot of the time. Uh, but, of course, this is the result of your observed minus your expected values, if you remember back to chi-square. Um, divided by uh, your expected. So we end up with a big uh, equation there that gives us our chi-square value, right? So in this case, we're looking at the distribution of the chi-square. In this case, we're looking at the distribution of the t-score. In this case, we're looking at the distribution of the f-ratio. It doesn't matter. All of these are just scores computed from a situation where there's no real pattern. And all we're doing is trying to say, when there's no pattern, what's the probability of getting a standardized score that is uh, far out here in the case of chi-square, far out here in the case of the F-ratio, or to either side in the case of the uh, T-score. All of this assumes a null distribution. And if we get a score that's far out here, far out here, or far out here on any of these distributions, what we're saying is that if the null is true, this would be a rare event. It just doesn't happen very often. Therefore, it's more likely that we should reject the null and uh, we have some support for our research hypothesis. So, in a nutshell, that's all these scores are about. So don't uh, get too worried about the difference, you know, whether you're talking about an F, a T, or a chi-square. In all cases, it's just a standardized score from a null distribution. And you're going to throw that against your data and say, does it look like my data came from the null? If it doesn't, hey, that's significant.